This video will cover the topic, Combining Functions, Advanced. In this video, we will learn how to combine functions and write their domains. Let's look at an example problem. Suppose that the functions f and g are defined as follows. f of x equals 1 over the square root of 2x minus 3, and g of x equals negative 5x squared plus 4x. We want to find f times g and f minus g, then give their domains using interval notation. When we see f minus g, this means that we take 1 over square root of 2x minus 3 and subtract negative 5x squared plus 4x. When we see f times g, then we multiply f times g together. If f has a domain a and g has a domain b, then the domains of the combinations of these functions can be written as follows. I have a question. What does the upside down u mean? This upside down u found here, 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 and here is an intersection of the two domains. So this means the elements or numbers that are common in both a and b. So we have f plus g, f minus g, and f times g. The, the domain for each of these is the intersection of a and b. We have f divided by g. It is the intersection of a and b, but we exclude the x value when g of x, or the new denominator, equals 0. Before we combine these two functions together, let's first find the domains of f and g separately. What kind of function is f of x? Well, it appears to be a rational function, and it looks kind of tricky. How do we figure out the domain? A rational function usually contains all real numbers in its domain except for values of x that cause the denominator to be 0. In this case, we have the square root of 2x minus 3 as a denominator. And because it is a square root, we also cannot have any x values that cause the inside of the square root to be negative, because the square root of a negative number is undefined. So do we have to find values of x that are greater than 0 then? Yes, exactly. If we take 2x minus 3 is greater than 0, then we solve for x. If we add 3 to both sides, then divide by 2, we find x is greater than 3 halves. There are no other restrictions for x in this function, so x is greater than 3 halves is our domain. In interval notation, it is written as 3 halves to infinity. Now we'll find the domain of g of x. What kind of function is g of x? I see a squared in it, so is it a quadratic function? Yes, and what kind of graph does a quadratic function make? A parabola? Yes, a parabola, which has the domain negative infinity to infinity because a parabola contains all real numbers. Remember the intersection of these two domains is all elements or numbers that are in both A and in B. When we combine these two domains we see that 3 halves to infinity is common in both functions. Looking at our box we see that when we subtract f and g and when we multiply f and g the domains are the same so we have our domain for both answers. After we combine the functions, we will be done with this problem. To subtract f and g, we do just that. Take 1 over the square root of 2x minus 3 minus the quantity of negative 5x squared plus 4x. We can simplify this by distributing this negative on the right side. We now have 1 over the square root of 2x minus 3 plus 5x squared minus 4x. This cannot be simplified any further, so this is our final answer with a domain of 3 halves to infinity. Okay, so now if I multiply f and g, the result is 1 over the square root of 2x minus 3 times negative 5x squared plus 4x, right? Yes. Now how can we simplify this? I can write negative 5x squared plus 4x as the numerator and square root 2x minus 3 as the denominator. Can it be simplified more? No, it cannot. Write this answer along with a domain of 3 halves to infinity, and you are done with this problem. So from what I understood, when we combine functions, the domains combine as well, except when we divide two functions. The x value when g equals 0 is excluded. To combine two functions, I perform the operation indicated, whether it be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and then I simplify as much as I can. Great job.